Hey everyone, welcome to another video here on White Coats and Corgis. Most of you probably know me from Instagram or TikTok where I make helpful free content for pre-meds and talk about my journey as a first-generation medical student. My mission here on YouTube is to give pre-med students all the information they need for a career in medicine. Today, I want to take some time to show you guys this amazing website called ProspectiveDoctor.com. It is completely free for students and has tons of good resources on there, like articles, free tools. They have all these video series that you can watch. And if you're a podcast person, I think they have four or five different podcasts that you can choose from. All this content is completely free. And today, I'm actually going to be going through one of their articles called 10 Questions Pre-Med Students Need to Ask When Shadowing a Doctor. I thought this article was really really good and insightful and the questions provoke a lot of important discussions that I think are really important for pre-meds to understand before choosing a career in medicine. So I decided to ask a doctor all 10 questions from this article and that's what's going to be in this video today. So stay tuned for that and here's the rest of the video. Yeah, um, great question to start off with. I think, you know, you could probably ask, you know, three different doctors the same question, you probably get three different answers. Because um, I think it depends a lot on, you know, the circumstances, um, you know, that people are kind of going through at any given moment. Uh, but I think one pretty common thing is that, you know, as a medical student, resident, doctor, you will a lot of times feel pretty strapped for time. Um, you know, there's a lot expected from you, you know, in terms of being at the hospital, doing research, um, and, you know, as a medical student and resident, you know, working on extracurriculars and it can sometimes feel like your time is being stretched uh, pretty thin. Um, so, you know, kind of the upside of that, though, is that you kind of get to develop, you know, skills in, times, in terms of kind of managing your time. Um, and you will find that you'll get better at making time for things that are important for you and kind of being able to prioritize. So it's definitely a challenge, but I would say overall, you come out all the better for it, um, you know, after being able to tackle something like that. Absolutely. Uh, I would say majority of like the vast majority of days I leave the hospital uh, very happy with myself. You know, it's it's really good to work with a, a great team of people. I think that's incredibly important. Um, you know, you want people who will kind of help you, uh, will look after you and help you out throughout the day uh, rather than kind of make work harder for you. So, you know, I mean, there, you know, unfortunately, I think this is true of any job. You know, there are days where you know, for one reason or another, things aren't going your way. And you'll feel that, you know, you're working harder than usual, struggling harder than usual. Uh, but, you know, the vast majority of days, I would say I leave feeling very good about myself and of what I'm doing. Yeah, I think, you know, regardless of what specialty you're in, some of the, the very best doctors I've seen, you know, whether they were surgeons, uh, internal medicine doctors, psychiatrists, you know, all across the board, uh, the doctors who are really amazing are the ones who are, you can tell they're extremely motivated uh, by their patients. So, you know, despite all the kind of other stuff that they have to do, everything that's on their plate, uh, you can always tell that, you know, care for their patients comes first above everything else. Um, and that shows, you know, you'll, you'll see that they kind of will sacrifice things, uh, whether it's kind of personal time or other things, and they'll kind of go out of their way to make sure that things are going well for their patients. And, you know, I think that's incredibly impressive. And it's, it's something that I strive to do uh, as much as I can. I think it's a very important quality. Yeah, um, I think, you know, nowadays, people apply to a, a good amount of medical school. So you, you, you know, you apply pretty broadly. But you still also want to be making, you know, pretty kind of wise decisions about where you're applying. So I think uh, first step for me was actually talking to one of my college advisors. That was incredibly helpful. And I think most colleges nowadays have like a, you know, we called it a health professions office, but there's usually people there who are kind of in tune with uh, kind of what the landscape is in terms of applying to medical schools. So getting their advice is incredibly helpful. It's usually pretty personalized. So they take into account, you know, how competitive are you as an applicant? Um, it's very useful advice. And then kind of also going from there and doing a little bit more like research into the schools. So, you know, I mean, I think from person to person, different things matter. So, you know, finances matter a lot for, I would say, a vast majority of people. So that's important to look at. Uh, location matters, uh, I would say, for most people. And then 
you know, other things like, do you have a partner um, uh, or do you have kind of any other circumstances that might uh, kind of keep you in one area as opposed to another? So those were all kind of things that I looked out for. Um, and, you know, but I would say, you know, really just having someone to help you with uh, in terms of looking for a med school, whether it's, you know, I know med school coach helps out with that as well. So whether it's, you know, someone at your school or someone outside your school, I think is, is an incredibly uh, important first step. Yeah, so I am a internal medicine resident uh, and I went into med school not really knowing what specialty I wanted to do. I think by the time I was a third year and I did my internal medicine uh, rotation, that's kind of when it solidified it for me. Um, I really enjoyed kind of, you know, people kind of called the internal medicine team as kind of the quarterback of patient care. So you might not be doing the surgeries yourself. You might not, you know, be doing a lot of the procedures. Uh, but you kind of have the final say in terms of, okay, does this patient need a procedure? So you have to kind of be the ones to make those decisions for your patients. Um, and so you kind of get to take very kind of comprehensive care of your patient and you get to manage uh, a whole host of their problems. And then you kind of call people, you know, for help here and there when you need help with specific problems. But it feels really rewarding to know that, you know, hey, like, I am the one who's kind of running the whole show and taking care uh, of this patient. Yeah, so I can start with uh, inside the hospital. That's usually where my day starts. Um, you know, depending on the rotation, if I'm on a floor rotation, which means, you know, seeing the inpatients on the wards at the hospital, uh, which I think is pretty much most like medical school uh, students experiences with internal medicine rotation. Um, those days start at seven o'clock. So I usually kind of get up at six, uh, shower, have breakfast, drive my way to the hospital. Um, and then at seven o'clock, I get signed out from the night team. Uh, they kind of just, you know, go over details of what happened overnight for my patients while they were covering. And then I quickly look through the look through some charts, um, see if any of the patients from overnight were sick and kind of prioritize those patients. And then you kind of go off, um, say good morning to your patients, check on them, see how they're doing. Um, you know, we call that pre-rounding. And then usually by about, it depends on the rotation, it depends on the attending. Um, but usually somewhere around like nine, 10 o'clock is when the whole team so, you know, your co-intern, your senior resident, the attending, the medical students, everyone gets together. Uh, and then we do like, you know, actual rounds where we go over, you know, for my patient, this is what happened overnight. This is what I would like to do today. Um, you run by, run that by the whole team. Um, and that can go for about, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. It takes us to about lunch. Um, and as interns, we get, you know, a protected time for lunch. Uh, so we can go to our new conference, listen to some lectures from either you know, our chief residents or other attendings who are, you know, kind of in their subspecialties. It's always very kind of educational, very interesting. Um, and then after that, uh, it takes us to like one o'clock. And then really the rest of the time is just tidying up our patients, making sure that what we said during rounds uh, is actually getting done. Um, and then you kind of prep your patients for sign out, uh, which we do at five o'clock usually. Um, and then that's kind of when you meet with the night team, you say, you know, here are my patients I had today. Uh, here's what's going on with them. Uh, here are things to look out for uh, in case things, you know, uh, problems arise overnight. Uh, and then that's it. Usually, you know, you sign out to them. And it's, I think the residents here are very good about not bothering you after you sign out, um, unless there's some kind of, you know, huge emergency that they absolutely need you for. But I've almost never been, you know, messaged after 5 p.m. when I leave. Uh, and then the rest of the night is kind of um, just time to kind of, I try to decompress as much as I can, uh, because you will find that, you know, working is very tiring. Um, so it's nice to, you know, I go home, go to the gym. Uh, I usually try to meal prep so I don't have to <laughs> spend too much time cooking every night. Um, and then I kind of just try to relax, you know, either play some video games with friends, catch up, uh, hang out with the co-residents, uh, or just, you know, have some alone time with my cat, uh, watch some TV. So you know, I think it's important to be, you know, really on when you're at work, because, um, you know, what you're doing is very important, and you don't want to be making mistakes that are affecting your patients. Um, but at the same time, it's also very important to be able to kind of switch off, if that makes sense, when you leave the hospital, um, and kind of switch over to making sure you're looking after yourself. Uh, because, 
you know, ultimately, if you're not taking good care of yourself, it's only going to be that much harder uh, to take care of your patients. So I try to balance uh, both of those as much as I can. Yeah, I would say, you know, some of the hardest challenges of med medical school are, uh, you know, I kind of talked about in the first question, just timing uh, and, you know, feeling like you don't have enough time. There's a lot that you have to do as a medical student. Um, you know, you have to, in your first kind of preclinical years, there's a lot of studying you have to do. There's always exams every, you know, couple of weeks, every month. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you're also trying to get your hands on some research. You're trying to do extracurriculars. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, you're also trying to kind of figure out what you want to do. And, and you know, I think, you know, it, people are in different stages in their lives in medical school. Um, so there's kind of all sorts of other life things that people are trying to do, you know, find their partners, uh, personal finances, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, you're trying to juggle all these things. And, you know, going from college to med school, it feels like there's kind of all these new personal responsibilities that you might not have had in the past. Uh, and then at the same time, you have a lot of academic responsibilities as well. So being able to juggle all of those things is, is a challenge. Um, but, you know, like I said, I think most people come out of it uh, all the better. Uh, they learn to do it really well. And then you kind of take those skills with you into residency, take that into being a doctor. And I think it's it's something that people, you know, will ultimately benefit from. But it's something that you you do have to kind of grapple with as a medical student. Uh, and, you know, the second part, kind of what, some of the most fun things, I think it's it's really cool coming from college uh, where, you know, people tend to be in a pretty big class. Um, a couple thousand, if not several thousand classmates, you don't really know everybody. Uh, you have some close friends, but, you know, you go to med school and it, a lot of people say it feels a lot like high school uh, for better or worse. You're in a smaller class, maybe a couple hundred. Um, and, you know, you know, everyone's faces, uh, if not everyone's names, you kind of, you know, pretty well acquainted with everyone. You still have your close friends, but everyone feels familiar. Um, and it's nice to be in an environment where kind of everyone is also kind of interested in the same things that you are. Uh, everyone's studying for the same exams. And, you know, I would say for the most part, people are pretty positive in med school and they, they try to help each other out. So it's I think it's a very supportive, very kind of like minded uh, environment to be in. And I think it's, it's great to just be surrounded by those people uh, while you're training to be a doctor. I think, you know. One thing that people may or may not tell you is that uh, you will see a lot of your friends who you went to college with who ended up not going to medical school or any kind of other postgraduate you know, education. Uh, their lives will take a very different trajectory from yours. And it's not necessarily to say that, you know, you will never see them again and that, you know, medical school will take all your friends away from you. Uh, but you'll see that, you know, they'll start, you know, they'll start making money. They'll start buying houses. They'll start getting married. Uh, and meanwhile, you're kind of, you know, nose deep in textbooks. And that's not to say that you you can't be doing those things in med school, um, but it, it feels different. You know, definitely, uh, you know, you, you are still a student uh, during those years. Uh, and then meanwhile, your friends kind of have their own jobs. They're, you know, kind of their, their life kind of moves at a different pace. Um, it's it's definitely not hard to keep in touch with your friends. You, you'll still keep your friends through med school. Um, but I think that's just something that was a little kind of unexpected because people tend to not tell you that, um, that, you know, your life kind of takes a different pace uh, while going through med school. I can't think of like a single light bulb moment. Uh, but recently I was in the uh, emergency department at the VA hospital here. Uh, where I train. And uh, it was a really nice two week rotation that I did there. You know, initially, I remembered kind of thinking back to emergency medicine rotation as a medical student. I didn't really like it. Uh, I mean, emergency medicine is a completely different realm uh, for someone who's in internal medicine. Things move at a very different speed. Uh, the logistics of it are very different. There's kind of different priorities in terms of caring for patients. Um, so I thought, uh, you know, whatever, like, I'll kind of just struggle through two weeks, I'll be done with it. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, and I actually really, really enjoyed it. It, um, I guess the big aha moment was that it really showed me how far I've come uh, from the start of intern year and from being a medical student. Uh, I think as a medical student, as a kind of first couple months intern, you don't feel so confident. 
uh, in making your own kind of decisions regarding patient care. Uh, and in the ED, it's, you know, it's your patient, it's you, and then you're attending. There is no senior resident who you kind of run the plan by before you present to the attending. Uh, and also the ED attendings really push for you to just, you know, come up with a plan. And so I got, you know, I think it, it really, having to do that uh, with every single patient I was seeing in the emergency room, it really showed me how far I've come. Uh, and I think that was an amazing realization because uh, sometimes you just don't, like, you're so busy, you don't really pick up on all the things you're learning. And it all kind of came together for me the last two weeks. Uh, and that was a really great moment. And I think a lot of people at some point in their residency training have that moment. I think that really helps to reaffirm what you're doing. <laughs> uh, I would definitely still choose a career in medicine. Uh, I still couldn't see myself choosing anything other than internal medicine. Uh, so the overall kind of track and, and scheme of things I don't think would have changed. Um, I think as a medical student, and, and this varies, you know, from program to program across the country. Uh, but in general, I feel like medical students don't get much training in terms of, you know, how to perform research. Everyone knows that research is a big thing for residency applications. Um, and that, you know, having your names on papers matters, but in terms of actually, like, how do you, how do you, like, you know, do a, you know, retrospective cohort study? How do you do, a, how do you set up a prospective trial? Um, nobody teaches you those things uh, in, in medical school. It's kind of an unfamiliar topic. And I think ultimately, a lot of people kind of just learn from doing. Um, but I wish there were kind of, you know, somewhere opportunities to have some formal you know, here's how you interpret statistics. And, you know, I remember there were projects where we were like scrambling um, to find like a college statistics major who could help us, uh, you know, you know, run through the data because nobody knew what to do with the numbers we were collecting. Uh, and I think if, if you know, we kind of had a little more experience with how do you, you know, take a research project from start to finish all the way, uh, I think that would have been really, really good. <laughs>